Hey there everyone, new kind of video today, and oh my, it is a whopper. Because you see, I know exactly who Yilan is. Yeah, that's right, I did some research. And also, I'm a very clever person sometimes, and it just so happens I have a mild fascination. Can't think of any reason why. With Yelan. And so I started looking into the matter a little bit. But before I get into all of that, let's just take some base observations, shall we? That seems like a reasonable thing to do. This is Yelan. Uh, she has nice hair. She's mostly dressed in blue. She has an interesting coat. Uh, it also kind of low key looks like she has a little tail back here, but I think that's just some weird center fluff thing from her coat. Uh, you'll also notice she has this dye around her neck. It's like a little pendant. Uh, she's got blue earrings. She's obviously hydro, right? So the whole blue motif thing seems to fit. Uh, also, claims to work for the Ministry of Civil Affairs. That's a weird way of phrasing that, don't you think? She's mysterious, called the Valley Orchid. Makes a lot of sense. So let's start with breaking down her name, shall we? In Mandarin, Yilan means Night Orchid. Quite literally. I, I think it's almost a, dir a direct translation. Uh, so between going by Valley Orchid and being dressed in basically just like nighttime blue colors, uh, I think the name tends to really fit. Uh, but there's not really anything else about her particular add-ons, like earrings, dye around the neck, whatever this weird little fluffy tail looking thing is. And so it's it's kind of just left at that, right? Wrong! I have more information, okay? Uh, she appears to be a fancy Vegas type lady. Clearly. Uh, there's, I mean, there's literally a dye around her neck. Right? Like, you don't just go around tossing dice around, just being, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's odd. So clearly it plays some sort of big factor uh, with her, right? Clearly. Uh, she is somehow tied to gambling. Like, quite obviously. That's what a die is. Like, that's the whole point. You use it for games and gambling. Uh, it'd be like someone having playing cards and being like, oh, that dude definitely, like, he he builds stairs. He's a carpenter. Why is he walking around with playing cards, man? No, that's not that's not what that is, obviously. Uh, so what about gambling specifically? Do we know? Well, uh, there's a couple of places in Liyue that might be interesting, perhaps. Uh, the main source, though, is actually the tea house. And there's a couple reasons why. Number one, if you were to go up and say, talk to somebody in the tea house, right? Uh, you might be interested to, to realize that you can't actually go in because to go into the tea house, you have to have like some sort of crazy deposit. And evidently ether doesn't roll that way or lumine, I guess for those luthine, uh, lumine mains out there. Uh, and then they also have like two very scary looking bodyguards just chilling at the front. I haven't been to many tea houses, if any, um, but I'm fairly certain that the contextual, you know, knowledge that I have of tea houses, they don't involve like huge deposits to get in, nor do they involve like scary looking bodyguards, security out front. You know what I mean? A little odd. And then actually, if you go and check the, the little notice billboard in Liyue, uh, just, you know, a couple paces down towards the, the crafting table thing, uh, you'll actually be able to eventually find, you have to maybe scroll through some, uh, you'll find a notice about some guy who basically got taken uh, <laughs> for everything he was worth uh, at the tea house of all places. And uh, he mentions a stewardess, I think, is the phrasing that uh, that the, the note lever left uh, used. And um, he got taken advantage of. Like <laughs> he got he got hustled, as we say. Uh, so clearly, there's some sort of like gambling activity going on there. Um, but that message also specifically calls out that the the person, the woman, that uh, basically sort of like 
you know, cleverly robbed him. Not, you know what I mean? Uh, she had beady eyes like a fox, right? And he calls that out specifically. And I will point out to you that Yilan kind of has those eyes. And not to mention, it would also maybe explain, like, the fur that's going on here. Like, it seems like such an odd detail to have what literally appears to be a foxtail hanging off the back of her jacket. Right? That seems weird. That's far too coincidental. Right? Obviously, that's, that's too coincidental. Um... Another thing that's maybe kind of interesting, not while we're still talking about the whole gambling aspect, right? There is actually a gambler artifact set. And while the majority of the pieces don't really go into detail about too much of anything, really, uh, they mostly just kind of talk about what the item actually does in terms of, like, basically allowing you to cheat <laughs> in, in the, 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 the center or the casino, whatever you want to call it. Um, it does call out one specifically the earrings and it says that they're a pair of blue earrings gamers uh i don't have the best color blindness awareness per se uh but those earrings in the artifact set they're not blue isn't that odd you know who does have blue earrings elon isn't that curious hmm. Uh, but it goes on to say that, you know, she she wears them, it keeps her calm, there's some sort of mild sedative involved to, to keep her calm at the the table, or something along that line. Uh, the pocket watch is also kind of interesting, because it clearly looks like it took a bullet for her. Uh, but there, there are a couple instances throughout the entire set that point to the gambler being a woman, and evidently blue earrings is also uh, a part of that. So, the Gambler Artifact set also sort of fits Yilan as well. Not saying that she is, in fact, the Gambler, uh, but it does sort of help fit the narrative a little bit, right? Coincidental? I don't know. But here's the most damning piece of evidence, and this is potentially where a couple of spoilers may occur, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the Chasm storyline as a whole, just about two main events that basically happen, uh, so if you don't want to hear that part, uh, click away from the video now, okay? Uh, if I haven't convinced you yet, then I don't know what to tell you. But if you don't want to hear the most damning evidence, then go away. This is your spoiler warning, uh, but it's not really that big of a spoiler, to be honest. So, uh, Yilan, we actually do see her in the Chasm storyline, right? Uh, there's a point where I think it's called the Wishmaker, that big stone. Uh, she, I think, shoots it and it falls and crushes the weird mechanical snaky thing that's trying to eat us. Uh, that's spoiler one. <laughs> well, she was there. Obviously, she was there. Uh, we never actually directly interacted with her or anything, which was sort of strange. Uh, there was some sort of text line in the story that alluded to us seeing some sort of shadow figure-ish thing of her. Um, but when you go through and actually finish uh, that quest line, I guess, uh, the the chasm itself becomes more populated with other miners and millilith and all of that. Um, there is one NPC that you can talk to right towards the beginning of where you started uh, in the chasm when you first dropped down. And he's a miner who's talking about how the tea house had representatives present. Interesting. So, that's spoiler two, by the way. So, with all of that in mind, um, it sounds like Yilan is very clearly tied to the tea house. She is, in fact, dressed as a gambler, may be dressed as. And the tea house is almost certainly a place to gamble. So it's almost obvious that that billboard, right? She is the person they were talking about in that message. So she clearly works at the tea house. And it's also, once again, interesting, I'll point this out, a mysterious person who claims to work for the, the Ministry of Civil Affairs. So 
I don't know if Yilan is necessarily the gambler from the artifact set, but she is almost certainly somehow tied to the tea house, which seems to somehow, along with the Commerce Guild, have some sort of tie to the chasm. But that really hasn't been flushed out at all. So hopefully we find out more about that. Uh, and if Yilan is coming in 2.7, which is likely to be happening, right? Because primarily, they wouldn't show her otherwise, right? Like, that's kind of what they did. They showed Ayato in 2.5, and he showed up in 2.6, right? So they're showing Yilan in 2.6. She should show up in 2.7, I'm assuming. So we may learn more about the Chasm in 2.7. I don't know what that means for Sumeru, if Sumeru is getting postponed or is, will also be a part of that. I don't know. Uh, but that is almost assuredly who Yilan is. And I, for one, am very much looking forward to finding out more about her. But that's it for now. Uh, just some fun little tidbits that I, uh, I looked up and learned, and I wanted to pass them off to you. So uh, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about Yilan. Uh, and, and, and yeah, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe, come back for more. And until then, I will catch you next time.